Graceland is a mansion on a 13.8 acre estate in Memphis, Tennessee, once owned by American singer Elvis Presley. Presley is buried there, as are his parents, paternal grandmother, grandson, and daughter. Graceland is located at 3764 Elvis Presley Boulevard in Memphis. It was opened to the public as a house museum on June 7, 1982, and attracts more than 650,000 visitors annually. Graceland was listed in the National Register of Historic Places on November 7, 1991, becoming the first site recognized for significance related to rock music. It was declared a National Historic Landmark on March 7, 2006, also a first for such a site. Presley's father, Vernon Presley, first inherited Graceland after Elvis' death on August 16, 1977. Lisa Marie Presley inherited Graceland after she turned 25 years old, according to a document which named Elvis' ex-wife Priscilla Presley as trustee. Following Lisa Marie's death on January 12, 2023, her eldest daughter Riley became the sole trustee and owner. Welcome to Graceland, the home of Elvis Presley. This is where you get your tickets and also catch the shuttle bus that takes you over to the mansion. Here's a look at the Graceland tour packages that are available and it shows you what is included and the prices. We're on the shuttle bus now as we cross the street. We're getting ready to go through that iconic gate. You can see it right there as we go through. And now we're going up the driveway. You can see Graceland in, in the distance. I can only imagine all of those pretty cars that Elvis used to own coming up this driveway, those famous Cadillacs he owned, limousines. And we went, it was close to Christmas. And Elvis loved Christmas. You can see he had the Christmas decorations up. You see they says Merry Christmas to all Elvis. And the blue lights line the driveway as you go up. Now we're pulling up right in front of the famous mansion. Welcome to Graceland everyone. Come along with us as we go inside and show you the house. As soon as you enter the mansion, the first room on your right would have been the living room. Here in the living room, Elvis greeted his guests and often entertained friends and family. The 15-foot white couch was custom made, as was the 10-foot coffee table. Elvis added the mirrors to the walls in 1974 to help make the room appear more spacious. This fireplace is one of three in the house and is gas burning. Elvis was a student of religion and in 1974, he added the stained glass peacocks as they were an ancient Christian symbol of eternal life and resurrection. In the music room sits a beautiful white grand piano. Many times family and friends gathered around Elvis at the piano as they spent hours harmonizing their favorite songs. Late night gospel sing-alongs were common in Elvis's life at home and on the road to relax and unwind. Elvis said it eased his mind. Sometimes Elvis could be found alone in their plan and singing for his own amusement. These steps would have led upstairs to where Elvis's bedroom would have been. This part of the house is off limits for the tour. It is said that the room is exactly the way it was when Elvis died. Next stop on the tour is down the hallway to Gladys and Vernon's bedroom. This would have been the bedroom area of Gladys and Vernon Presley, which is Elvis's parents. After the death of Gladys and Vernon got remarried, this became the room of Elvis's grandmother, Minnie Mae Presley. Here is a glimpse of the bathroom that is attached to this bedroom. This is a formal dining room where the evening meal would usually be served around 9 to 10 o'clock in the evening. Elvis sitting at the head of the table would often host 10 to 12 friends and family around this table for dinner and conversation. The china on the table is Nora Taki in the Buckingham pattern and is Priscilla's and Elvis's wedding china and the flatware is towel in the Chippendale pattern. The Italian chandelier is one of three Elvis bought in 1974 and matches the one above the stairs. Elvis was always ahead of the times and while it's commonplace today, even back then, Elvis had a television in every room. The dining room was also the place that the family put up their Christmas tree each year. It was placed in the window behind Elvis's chair. Elvis and his family and friends kept various hours and routines. Elvis had cooks and maids on staff that came and went in eight-hour shifts. Someone was always on duty as meals were often cooked to order. The meals were a simple southern cooking. They often included things like steaks, pork chops, meatloaf, or fried chicken, and of course, lots of cheeseburgers. Elvis loved homemade banana pudding. That was always available. 
Elvis redecorated several times, but today it remains as it last was done in the mid-1970s with the harvest gold and avocado green that was popular at the time. The stained glass light fixtures were bought at the same time as the crystal chandeliers. Elvis had all the latest appliances, including a very early microwave oven that you can see on the countertop. Here on the table is the security camera monitors that Elvis and his staff used to keep watch on the grounds. There are monitors also in Elvis's bedroom suite. The phones are where the incoming calls were answered. After leaving the kitchen area, we go down the steps and head towards the TV room. This is the TV room. Elvis loved football and knew all the professional players, teams, numbers, and positions. Elvis got the idea from three TV sets from former President Johnson, who used to watch all three network news programs. Elvis thought it would be great to catch all the football games at once. He also enjoyed variety shows and comedies. To the right of the TVs is a built-in jukebox that can hold 100 singles and is wired to speakers throughout the house. To the left is part of Elvis's personal record collection. He loved all kinds of music, but especially loved southern gospel music. On the right wall is a lightning bolt, which is part of Elvis's personal logo and motto that you usually see with the letters TCB. It means taking care of business in a flash or quickly. On the left wall, the second gas burning fireplace in the home. The mirrors again make the room look larger and more spacious. The yellow bar slash soda fountain made this room great for parties and entertaining. Now we enter the pool room. Elvis purchased this pool table in 1960 and enjoyed playing with his family and friends. The tear in the felt happened one day when one of his friends tried a trick shot that didn't quite work out right. Memphis interior designer Bill Eubanks helped Elvis with the 1974 redecorating. Most of the furnishings were chosen at the time as well as the 350 to 400 yards of fabric on the ceiling and walls. The furniture is not antique, however the Louis XV style chairs and the art prints work well with the turn of the century European theme of the room. In the right corner you will notice the third fireplace in this house and the only wood burning one. However, after the fabric was installed it was not used because of the fabric. After the pool room we go back up the steps. You notice the green shag carpet on the walls. This will take us back up to the main level of the house. As we get to the top of the steps, we enter the den, or what most folks know it as, the jungle room. After Graceland opened for tours, the media nicknamed the den, the jungle room, and it has stuck, but to Elvis, it was just the den. Originally, this area was a porch on the back of the house. Elvis enclosed it and made it a room in the mid-1960s. That's when the waterfall was also built. In 1974, Polynesian or Tiki furniture was very popular. Elvis saw discard furniture in a local store named Donald's and bought it immediately. It reminded him of his favorite vacation place, Hawaii. With the addition of numerous animal statues, it became the jungle room, as the press put it. As a little girl, Lisa would sometimes curl up in the big chair for naps. The carpeting on the walls and ceiling were also a popular 70s idea that turned out to be very handy for acoustics. In 1976, Elvis recorded two of his albums in his room, from Elvis Presley Boulevard, Memphis, Tennessee, and over half of his last album, Moody Blue, were both recorded with Elvis standing on the landing between the kitchen and den. The furniture was moved out and the musicians and their instruments were brought in. RCA drove their mobile recording truck right up behind the house and ran the cables inside. After you exit the jungle room, you come outside and you are able to get a glimpse at the back of the mansion. This building was part of Graceland Farms well before Elvis owned Graceland. It was possibly used as a pump house at one time, but later used by Vernon as a smokehouse to cure meat. Elvis also decided that it would make a good firing range, and that's what it was used for for a short period of time. Other than that, it was used as a storage area by Elvis and his family. Elvis's birthplace. This is a scale model of the tiny shotgun house in Tupelo, Mississippi, where Elvis Presley was born on January the 8th, 1935. Here the Presleys lived a simple working class lifestyle. In search of a better life, the Presleys moved from Tupelo, Mississippi to Memphis, Tennessee in 1948. The Racquetball Building Elvis took up racquetball in the early 1970s and enjoyed the sport so much that he decided to have his own court built. The personal sports complex, complete with a weight training area on the ground floor, full-size racquetball court and jacuzzi and dressing rooms upstairs was completed in 1975. 
Elvis spent approximately $200,000 on the building and took so much pride in the effort that he personally supervised the construction. The Meditation Garden. For security purposes, Vernon Presley, with special permission from the city, had the grave sites of Elvis and his mother Gladys moved from Forest Hill Cemetery to Graceland in October of 1977. Since then, the garden has become the final resting place for Vernon, paternal grandmother Minnie Mae, daughter Lisa Marie, and grandson Ben. A small marker has also been placed in memory of Elvis's stillborn twin brother. The large marble cross was Gladys Presley's original monument at Forest Hill, and the headstone, which features the Star of David to represent Gladys's Jewish heritage, was placed at her grave in December 1964. The statue of Jesus with outstretched arms was a gift to Elvis from his friends one Christmas. Meditation Garden was built at the request of Elvis in the mid-1960s. It featured Italian statues, an elaborate fountain, and special lighting. The brick wall behind the Grecian-inspired columns is inlaid with primitive stained glass handmade in Spain in the mid-1800s. The garden offered Elvis a private area for meditation, reflection, and quiet time. It was one of his favorite places. Now this is the final resting spot for Elvis Presley, the king of rock and roll. Elvis was born January 8, 1935. He died August 16, 1977. Rest in peace, Elvis. We hope that you enjoyed this video tour of Graceland. Thank you for coming along with us to see Elvis' beloved Graceland. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also, if you like to follow us and keep up with the VA Fun Seekers adventures, please hit that subscribe button, ring that notification bell. That way you can keep up with all the latest and greatest videos from us. Thank you all so much for watching and God bless. Okay.